All right, so we want to prove that this set does not have measure zero. Um, and basically the idea is that, well, the measure of the set, well, if you were to find the, the total volume of the set, it would be you take B1 minus A1 times B2 minus A2 all the way up through multiplying all the way up to Bn minus An, and that's your volume. Um, you just multiply all the edges, the lengths of all the sides together. Um, but this is pure mathematics. We need to do everything proof-based and knowing only the information that we have so far. Um, so first, um, note that the integral on the um, interval a, b of the function which is 1 everywhere is b minus a because if um, p is a partition of a, b um, whose subrectangles have edges or um, vertices. So we're going to start with x1, then x2 is going to be larger than that, and we're going to go up to xm. Let's call it an LBB. Then um, the upper sum of just the function which is always 1, given this partition, well, it's going to be the sum over all rectangles. It's going to be the sum over all um, i equals 1. So it's going to be the sum over all rectangles in the partition. Volume of the rectangle? No. We start with the maximum over um, p of the function, which is always 1. No. Um, the notation is you put the function in the subscript and you put the set inside the parentheses. Yeah, there's going to be noise in the background. But yeah, so it's this times the volume of R. Is this it? Maybe it is the function in the parentheses. Anyways, you can think of this thing, so this is the maximum of the function. No, no, it is the other way, I, I think. It is the 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 max the supremum over the set r of the function which is always one so this is going to be the sum for all r and p now any any um now the elements in p so the endpoints of the sub rectangles are x1 x2 all the way up through xm so the you've got the rectangles the first rectangle goes from x1 to x2 the next rectangle will be an interval, it goes from x2 to x3, then x3 to x4, etc. So to be the um, so instead of summing over all r and p, we can sum from i equals 1 to m minus 1, and we're looking at m xi to xi plus 1. That's why I started at i, because th then the leftmost endpoint is going to be 1, x1. And then I ended at m minus 1, because the rightmost endpoint will then be X, let's see your x i plus 1 when you plug in i equals m minus 1 is just going to be x m. Okay, so it's this times the volume of x i x i plus 1. So this is going to be, well, the maximum or the supremum of a, fun, of a value which is always 1 um, is just 1. And then the volume of this is just, so it's going to be x i plus 1 minus x i. Um, so this is going to be x1, x2 minus x1 plus x3. And I, I'm going into a lot of detail here. You can likely see where this is going. xm minus xm minus 1. So you're going to get a lot of cancellation between all these terms here. And what you'll end up with is xm minus x1, which is b minus a. 
Okay, and that's basically what we're doing. Okay, so. Um, let a n, I'll just use this at, um, given a1 and b1 all the way up through a n b n, let capital A N be the set A1 B1 cross all the way through A N B N. And I'm doing this because I don't want to have to write this set a bunch of times. Okay, so what I do is I claim um, let's see here, I claim an does not have content zero for any a n. So we're going, um, we will use induction on it. All right, for the base case, then this is pretty straightforward. Well, the integral over a1, b1 of 1, well, this we just proved is b1 minus a1, and this is greater than 0. Um, so by exercise 3-15, um, a1, b1 does not have content zero. Because exercise 3-15 says that, um, what does it say? If a, it says that if the, um, if a set has content zero, then the integral of the indicator of that set is zero. So contrapositively, if the integral of an indicator of a set is non-zero, then the set cannot have content zero. And of course, integrating the function one over the set AB is basically is the exact same thing as integrating the indicator function uh, whose set is A1, B1, this interval here. Okay, um, so we know that this interval does not have content zero. And in fact, I think that was a, wasn't that a previous exercise as well? I don't know. There, there's, there's a lot of things that were proven in previous exercise. Um, and And furthermore, A1, B1 does not have, well here, I'll, I'll say it this way, and since A1, B1 is compact, why is it compact? Because it's closed and bounded. Um, theorem 3-16, guarantees that the measure of this set is not zero. All right, so that's the base case. Um, if measure of a n is not equal to zero, so this is, um, I'll say for induction here, for induction, if the measure of a n is not zero, then, um,
Let's see, the indicator function of a n is integrable. No, we want a n plus 1. Because we're proving it for a n, now we want to prove it for a n plus 1. So, let's see here. So, Now, I, I guess I guess if I want, I am doing this a little bit on the fly because it's a pretty straight, straightforward exercise. Um, but I am skipping over. I am being a little um, ambiguous here. So, um, when I say for the base case, this should apply for any a one b one, and this induction case should hold for any a n. Um, so this is for all a n. So this is for any set a n, which can any set which can be written a one b one cross all the way through a n b n, where a i is less than b i for each i. So then for any a n plus one. This chi a n plus 1 is integrable, so by Fubini, the integral of chi a n plus 1. So remember, this is the integral of chi. Now this is going to be, this is a n cross. Um, a n plus one, b n plus one. So here the a n, the a a one b one through a n b. A one b one through a n b n come directly from the set capital a n plus one. Okay, so by Fubini, this integral equals this integral. Um, fu now at uh, in the next step stage, we're actually applying Fubini. Um, and so basically what we're doing is we're doing the integral of chi a n integral on a n plus 1, b n plus 1. And we're just integrating the function 1 here. Um, okay. And so... And this, um, so I guess what we have to do here is, whoa, my computer's not liking me. Let um, A, uh, I'm using these layers too much. Let's, let C be the integral over A n of 1 and B, uh, D be the integral over a n plus 1, b n plus 1 of 1. Um, the measure of d, hmm, oh yeah, the, duh, this is exactly what I was doing. This is exactly where I was proving that the integral of a1, b1 is, equals b1 minus a1 is strictly positive. That's why I need to prove this to use it here. Um, so I don't need to do, I don't need to define new variables. I'm good with what I had before. Um, go away. This equals, I'll write it here below. Equals. So now we've, we're done using Fubini, so now we're just going to finish this out. So this is going to be the integral of chi a n times um, no, no, this is, this is, it's the integral over a n of the integral here. This is it. So it's this integral, then this integral of this function. Um, 
So it's the integral over an of the function, which is always this. Um, and so this is going to be, um, well, obviously this is given by the product from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of bi minus ai, but more importantly, this is strictly positive, um, strictly greater than 0. Um, so as um, before, the measure of a n plus 1 is non-zero, because you do the same line of reasoning. Um, the integral of this integrator function is strictly positive, which means that um, by exercise 3-15, the set does not have content zero, um, the set a n plus 1 does not have content zero and an plus one is compact because it is a closed and bounded set and therefore its measure is non-zero. Um, thus, the measure of an is non-zero for any set an, which is of the form a1, b1 through an, b1, n. And this is of course, so long as each ai minus or each bi minus ai is greater than zero because otherwise, because if that weren't true at any case here, then these integrals would evaluate to zero. And in order for these arguments to work, you need the integral to be strictly greater than zero. So anyways, this is sort of a messy um, exercise. I didn't really prepare too much beforehand and um, it's for precisely this reason that it's a it's a problem where it's a very obvious and straightforward um, result and the difficulty is not in knowing that it's true or sort of yeah it's it's not an intuitional problem it's a problem of knowing or determining the best way to prove this obvious fact mathematically um, so that's the sort of crux of the effort that needs to be put into this problem. And we've done that, and so we're done.